Alice Springs, Australia's heart, tourist mecca and desert town. 27,000 people live in this town under the shelter of the McDonnell Ranges. And once a year, on the last weekend of August, the town comes alive with truckies here for the National Road Transport Hall of Fame's reunion. But this year, there's a difference. The winner of the Truck and Life Rig of the Year competition will be officially announced and presentations made on the Sunday. And on the Thursday, the first ever Truckies Day. Well, the ICC, she's a chicken on down the line. Well, I'm a little old boy, I'm a log that's far to hide. Well, nothing trumps me tonight. I can touch the scales all right. Six days on the road, they're gonna be home tonight. My name is Bruce Honeywell, and um, we're welcome to you all here today. Where we're trying out something a little new, and it's uh, it's one of those things you go through. Uh, is anyone going to come? But uh, look at this. This is just wonderful, and uh, and we're all here for one reason because we all spent a fair bit of our lives looking out the windscreen, and um, that's what brings us together today. This afternoon is designed for nothing else but to make us feel good about working in the transport industry. Um, and now it's up to us to make it a, a really good afternoon. Uh, 12 months ago, I came here and I had a chat to Liz, who I've known for many, many years. And um, we talked about developing a Truckies Day. And since then, we've got the Volvo Group, which is Mack Trucks and Volvo Groups, and we'll be hearing about that shortly. They've come in and, and, and certainly supported us and uh, with what we're doing today. But, but first of all, I'd like to find Liz. There she is just to give us a welcome to this Hall of Fame. Thanks, Bruce, and I apologise. I've almost lost my voice, and that's partly because I, I don't shut up talking about the trucks for about three weeks before. But on behalf of our Board of Management, our staff and our volunteers, and of course our membership, we welcome you to the National Road Transport Hall of Fame. We are a uh, community-based, self-funded organisation. We uh, deliberately don't take any funding from government or council, and we've had some pretty generous offers over the years, but we want to remain true to the industry, and that's part of what we did when we talked about developing a truck each day. Uh, traditionally, we've looked after the history of the industry, and obviously that will always be our focus, but you guys today are tomorrow's history. When we're sitting here in 10 years' time, 30% of you won't be here, and we need to make sure that we've got your stories recorded and uh, up on our wall for posterity. And uh, we really thank Bruce. Bruce has put an amazing amount of effort into this day today, and we're really glad to see such a high turnout. As Bruce said, this is the first time we've done this, and we've had an actual ball pulling it together, and I know Bruce has got some exciting things in. But in, on behalf of us, thank you very much for making the effort. Some of you I know went to the trouble of coming up a day earlier. So thank you very much. Thank you, Liz. And, and uh, again, I, I think the whole industry owes Liz a great debt of uh, gratitude to have this place. Uh, and I know there are uh, museums and, and, and heritage places all over Australia. Not saying one's better than the other, but this is the national one. This is in the Northern Territory, this is in the centre of Australia, and for me, it makes it very, very special. So thank you, Liz. Now, from time to time, and I've, I've even heard it here today, there's a lot of robust discussion between truck drivers, truck owners, operators, and truck manufacturers. Um, today, I think, is a day to maybe put some of that aside, because let's face it, we're one family. We're all together, we're all partners, and then I'm, I'm talking about, uh, in, in this particular day, Mack trucks, Volvo trucks, and we who drive them, we who swear about them when we're broken down beside the road. But the overall picture is we're all on the same game, hauling freight, keeping this country going. And as my, my good friend Bob McMillan brought up once, it's an essential service, and I cannot think of a more essential service in this nation than what we do at different times. And uh, so we'll keep on with that. Now, 
The Volvo Group, Mack Trucks and Volvo have been very generous today. They've paid for the tucker, they've paid for the day and a nice meal this afternoon. Um, I came back into this side of the game, the journalism side of the game, only 12 months ago with Truck and Life. And uh, I met a bloke called Arnie Carnarvon uh, probably around 12 months ago. Normally you expect the corporate types, and he's certainly corporate, I mean it's Volvo after all. But uh, I also found a bloke who could talk about, he was interested in the fact that I worked on Northern Territory cattle stations. He's interested in tractors and bulldozers and trucks and everything. And, and we've sat late at night and had, had some pretty, pretty interesting yarns and, and where the industry is going. So he's more than a suit, is what I'm trying to say. And I'd like um, the head man of Volvo Group in Australia, Arna Carnarvon, to come up and uh, just give us a welcome to the day. Thank you, Bruce. Thank you, Bruce. I feel very embarrassed about that introduction, but anyway. Um, we are very happy to be here uh, from Mac and Volvo Trucks. Uh, we think it's a really good initiative, and I hope that this can grow, and I hope that we can continue to be a part of it. And always when we support anything, you can wonder, why do we do that? W what is the sort of thought behind doing something like that? And I, th I think that is because we all know that trucks are more than only technology and production and things like that. It is life itself. Uh, earlier this week, I had a customer dinner with Mac customers. And it was in Brisbane, it was not so many customers, we had a really good time. And you are right, Bruce, we talked about everything as we always do. We talked about trucks, we talked about uh, uh, racing, we talked about anything that you do in a night like that. And we had a really good time. I was there together with Dean Bestwick, and I don't know if you know him, but if you don't, Dean should stand up and you will soon. So that guy over there, that tries not to stand up, but he will in a second, because I'm his boss. Uh, <clears throat> Dean, Dean is Mr. Mack Trucks in Australia, New Zealand, Papua New Guinea, New Caledonia, and the South Pacific Islands, so he is Mr. Mack Trucks. Anyway, we had a good dinner, we talked about everything, as we always do, and I asked one of the customers, what do you think about the factory? Because they had visited the factory this day, and he said, I thought it was fantastic. Nice production, clean, nice trucks. It was really good and I was impressed. But then he said something interesting. He said, you know what, Anna? I had a thought. I was standing at the end of the production line looking at these new Mack trucks on its way out and I made a reflection. This truck will go out there now. It will be out there for 15, 20 years. It will move through a several row of owners. It will make a lot of money. It will have its first driver, its second driver, its third driver. Some of the drivers will take their kids along and they will remember that with their dad. Some of the drivers will take their girlfriends along. Some will remember some breakups and some will maybe take some new girlfriends. And that truck will be sort of part of the whole life. And it was a very fa fascinating reflection for me because it's true. Those trucks are out there and they are a part of what we all do. And I think that's fantastic. And that's also why we are very happy from Mac and Volvo Trucks to be allowed to support Bruce in this. And I hope that it can continue to grow and be a bigger event as time passes. But still, fantastic, good start, and you are all here. So thank you very much, Bruce. Thanks, Arne. Now, before we get into um, a, a few ideas that I've got to get us through the afternoon and with, with a bit of interest, I'd, li I'd like pretty briefly to talk about Truck and Life. Um, it's been around for 36, 37 years. It was born in the bad old days of the, uh, they were coming out after the blockade and Razorback and road tax and uh, government since then acquiesced and uh, road tax was killed off and they've found a hundred other ways of getting the same money and more out of us all. So. Uh, I, I, when you look at the whole picture, I'm not sure what was achieved, but what was achieved was truckies going to jail and, uh, well, I mean, what was achieved was truckies stopped going to jail and those, those incredibly bad laws of 30-odd uh, years ago. Truck and Life then went on. I was fortunate enough to step out of the cabin of a truck, and it was a Mac, strangely enough, um, a cruise liner at that stage, and I did 10 years, close enough to 10 years with Truck and Life through the 80s. And um, 
I realised that I might be able to write a story that someone could follow, take the odd picture, and that was a pretty interesting part in, in my time. I went out 20 years away from truck and life and I came back a year ago and we've been building it again. And, and from what people tell me, we've, we've brought about certain changes and hopefully we're on the right track. We're here this weekend, and that's when I introduce you to our team in a moment. We're here to get feedback, story leads, are we on the right track, what can we do to make it better? Because Truck and Life is a magazine um, that really needs the input from people on the road. And, and I'm totally dedicated to get that somehow or other, to get that in the pages. So we tell stories that can be looked back, looked back on in the future and also address issues of the day. Um, and any ideas, anything to help us reach those goals, I'm totally open to. Now, Truck and Life today, we're a small team, probably about a quarter of the size of, of what we were in the 80s. And pretty much we're all here today. We've got Sam, if you'd stand up, Samantha Rees-Jones. Samantha is the pretty much the voice on the phone of Truck and Life. Everything comes into her. Um, the photographs and everything, the stories are right and contributors right, go through Sam and in, into production. So she's, she's core in it. We've got Enver, Enver Jamal. He, he basically does everything, mostly. Um, <laughs> Um, and basically that's Truck and Life today. We rely on contributors and rely, rely on me. And we've got Evan, who's the, the video man today, taking over my normal job. But that's it, that's, that's, that's Truck and Life. We're, we're not, we're owned by a big company, but a, as a unit, we do our own thing. And, uh, and we're pretty much, pretty, well, I'm not lean, but the, the operation's lean and mean. So, uh, <laughs> um, so, yeah, truck and life. We need everyone's feedback. Keep us on the straight. Don't, don't be afraid to, to talk about it. Arne Carnarvon introduced him as Mr. Mac around half the world by the sound of it. And uh, that's Dean Bestwick. So I'd, I'd like to call Dean up now, not to talk about Mac trucks so much, but talk about the, uh, the, the trucking years that, that he's on. And we might give him a bit of a stir. Now, I think, that I've, talked enough from up here talking to you. We'll let, we'll let Dean go for a while. And uh, then if you can give him a bit of cane, I mean, we'll, we'll go. Dean, Dean Bestwick, Mack Trucks, Mr. Mack Trucks. Thanks, Bruce, after that. And uh, thanks, Arnie. I, I hope I get a bit of a pay rise because of uh, taking on a bigger area of responsibility by the sound of it. So, yeah, okay. Thank you. You want me to talk? Or? Oh, sorry. I don't know. What do you want me to say? Oh, look, I, they, I, they told me, um, I think it was Nicole, told me there's a tap that you, you turn on and it just comes out. So consider oh, okay. the, the, the tap turned on. No, I've only had one Crown Lager, so yeah, but anyway, it gets better as the day goes on. I suppose from my perspective, um, I've been lucky enough to be uh, looking after the Mac brand here in Australia for the last three years. Uh, I've only been working for Mac um, for the last 13, so I'm relatively uh, a pup in the organisation. We've got a lot of long-term uh, employees at the Mac brand. And uh, all I set out to do when I become um, the brand head was to ensure that uh, when I take over the brand and when I leave the brand, it's in a better position. And uh, that's what we strive for in our team here at Mac. Um, and it is, I think Bruce and everybody's touched on it so far, <clears throat> you know, the Mac brand's going to be here long after I'm here and uh, the heritage that uh, comes with that iconic brand, uh, particularly here in Australia and North America, it's, um, you know, we just need to uphold that and we love it. Um, I, I've worked for myself in the transport industry a long time ago and, uh, and I've only been, like I said, only been with Mac for 13 years, but I don't know what I did before I started working for Mac. It sort of paled into insignificance because uh, the Mac brand is all consuming, the transport industry is all consuming and I absolutely love it. Um, my affiliation started with uh, years and years ago. I lived in a, a little country town called Warhope in New South Wales, and we were lucky enough to live on a hill. And we were only two kilometres off the off the highway. Sorry, a kilometre off the highway uh, into our farm. And uh, I used to have a transformer set up next to my bed with a CB radio hooked up, and I had an aerial off the gutter of the house. And uh, we used to pick up the line haul trucks that used to come through because um, my father had a depot based in our farm where the line haul trucks used to come in and we used to cart from May Nicholas and back then the overnighters. So uh, we used to get all those guys coming through. 
My first ever paying job, funnily enough, was uh, washing an F12 Volvo brand new Volvo. I haven't told many people that actually, but uh, it was a good job. It didn't get very dirty because it didn't go fast enough to splatter the bugs. But uh, <laughs> sorry, Arnie. <laughs> but uh, but look, it was all good, and uh, and you know we revolved, and um, our life revolved around transport. Um, much to the disgust of our neighbours, you know, we used to have blind haul trucks coming in at 1am, uh, 3am and 5am every night of the week except Saturday nights and uh, and it was always good. We used to get up and unload the trucks and uh, have them ready to go for the next morning. Mate, um, we want to get back to your trucking days. So right. so tell us about it. What's, give us something interesting or what's, what's the worst thing you ever did on the road? And we've all got one of those stories. Well, look, I, you know, I really... <laughs> oh, come on, come on. You, <laughs> well, you show me yours yeah. and I'll show you mine. Yeah, okay. Well, I don't mind about telling the folks, well, ever there's a camera and I'm being recorded. And no, 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 no. I guarantee, I guarantee you they won't show up anywhere other than on a Truck and Life DVD. Oh, look. <laughs> you got the solid guarantee, mate. Come on, come on. Well, I won't be talking truck models or brands, but, um, you know, look, I suppose... Brand X. Yeah, Brand X. Well, yeah. the speed limiting factor, I suppose, was always an issue. I used to run a little bit of line haul uh, just on a simple circuit out through... Um, uh, the west of, uh, of New South Wales, um, out from Tamworth and around through to Narrabri, um, um, up to Moree and around. And I suppose to do that in the time that I needed to do it, um, I quite often ran over a branch which would flick off my speed limiter at the back of the uh, back of the gearbox. Was that in the Pilliga? No, no, no. It was, that was generally between Moree and Warrialda. So yeah, <laughs> yeah. But um, yeah, no. I suppose when you reflect back on it, it was uh, it's what you did and what you had to do most of the time. So what are you actually and saying here? Um, give us some numbers. Well, okay, well I used <laughs> Where to was that little needle sitting? Well, it wasn't a matter of the number, it was a matter I had to catch up. There was always another Brand X um, <laughs> that used to always, I know, would leave in front of me and he was delivering all the uh, Caterpillar product and uh, I used to try to run him down so I could get into uh, Inverell before him. But, um, oh look, it was fast enough. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah, but Thanks. come on, come on, this is, uh, like, I, like I say. <laughs> <laughs> i got Arnie looking at me on this. <laughs> oh, okay, it was, it was less than 140 anyway. <laughs> oh, that's, that's not too bad. We've, we've all done that off a hill. <laughs> back, at, back in the day, mate, I was getting in trouble to do that, unless yeah. you're going down a steep hill. But. Thank you, Dean. Dean no Beswick from Mac Trucks. Now we're a wee bit ahead of time and I'll just go over what we've got coming up uh, through, through the afternoon. Um, we're, we're waiting on the Mayor of Alice Springs uh, to have a talk to us um, and I'll go over this again shortly. He's uh, probably one of the hardest jobs and, and we all know, we're all aware of the issues around Alice Springs. One of the hardest jobs of, of any Mayor I guess in the country. But also his family ancestry goes back to uh, Coward. Oh he is here! <laughs> Why don't I just rephrase that? <laughs> I'd like to welcome Damien Ryan, the Mayor of Alice Springs, who I said... No, Damien. Who I said has got to be Mayor of... of will have a, one of the most difficult administrative jobs in, in Australia. And, um, and he battles through with, with issues on both sides and somehow gets... most of the time gets a conclusion and uh, I take my hat off to you. Oh, thanks, Brett. Um as I said, Damien goes back, his family goes back in transport, and uh, I'm just going to leave Damien to tell us about it. All right, well thanks, and welcome to Alice Springs everybody. It's great to have you up here again for the reunion. He said I had a hard job, but you know, I've got a pretty good offsider in Liz. She's on the council with me, and you know, if she can run this out here, she can help run Alice Springs pretty easy, but you know, Liz does a great job. Um, m my dad, came up to the Territory late 40s and uh, he had a uh, mining and uh, concessions business with a bloke called Noel Buntine and uh, then he was approached to uh, be the secretary of cohort which was like a, a group of about four families who uh, had the contract to cart freight or general goods from the railhead here to Burden in the north up near Larimar so uh, he was secretary there for a while and then they said to him he was welcome to join it if he got a, bought a truck. So he and Noel Buntine got together and bought their first Mac and uh, they set up Territory Transport. So they joined the group and carted general goods from here to Bird. Then they get un unloaded and then on the return leg they'd pick up copper at Pico and bring it back here to 
Alice Springs and put it on the, the train going south. Um, a little while later, uh, Jimmy Martin had one of the, the, the groups in, in the uh, consortium for cohort called Overland Transport. So Dad uh, and Noel bought that. So they've you know, tripled their fleet. They went from one Mac and now they had a, a comma and an international as well. But, uh, you know, some great stories. But one of the big trips they did on their Mac was, uh, it was about the time Burden was closing down and Larimar was going to become the railhead in the north. And uh, they had decided, North Australia Railway had decided to upgrade to diesels, uh, diesel locomotives. So the, the, the locomotive came from Adelaide to here. There were no cranes of that sort of stature in Alice Springs in those days, but they had to get that onto the back of a truck and then take it from here to Larimar and unhook it. So it, it was a sort of event that most of the town turned out for because these guys worked hard at it and decided the only way was to jack it up uh, on um, railway sleepers, slowly lift the carriage up, then unconnect the, uh, the, the, uh, the, the carriageway wheels on the base, roll them out, then back a trailer in underneath the engine and lower it down onto it. So it, it, was, uh, it took about 16 hours to load this thing because when they had to back the trailer back in, the railway line was so skinny and fell away they had to build up all the dirt so this truck could go back in. There was only a couple of inches to spare between these sleepers, which some of the old photos you look at look pretty rickety, but I've got no idea the weight of this thing, but they dropped it on there and then as a family uh, with my mum and my dad and, and uh, one other brother in those days, we then followed that truck to Larimar because it was probably the most important piece of freight they've ever carried uh, to be able to unload it the way it had been put together. So that's how the diesels got into top end and then you know a few years later they closed that rail on the top end so there you go all this work done for nothing. But my uh, one of my uncles ran a, a cattle property up north called Elsie Station which is uh, you know in the weir the never never stuff so as a three-year-old, my mother tells me I did my first trip in a Mac uh, with a bloke called Billy Brummel, and he drove for Dad. And the deal was that I was going to go up and spend some time on Elsie Station. My mother says she can never remember how my dad sort of convinced her that I'd be all right going with this bloke, but she remembers saying goodbye to me here in Alice Springs. So I think back, and I think Billy Brummel, I remember stories, me, he was a pretty easy going, rough fella at times, but how he looked after a three year old and got water for me or milk for me on the way up to Larimar, I've no idea, but I got there all right, he delivered me to my uncle at Larimar. <laughs> so yeah, we had some good times in the family with trucks and uh, when Noel Buntine decided to go and cart livestock, that's when Dad and Noel, uh, Noel went off with the cattle and Dad stayed with General Freight there for a while. He, he went on to have a, a tyre business here, um, John F. Ryan tyres, he sold a lot of tyres, he brought Bandag to Central Australia and when he finally got an import licence for Michelin tyres from France, uh, Holmes of Court came across from WA and bought the tyre business off Dad. So that family was around in the early days, did a lot of things with trucks and today I've got a younger brother who drives for Tanami Transport but uh, I like going with him but I never had the skill to drive one. But thanks for listening to me my story today. But have a good time while you're here in Alice. Well done. OK, we're really galloping through this. Now, what have we got in the rest of the afternoon? We'll break shortly. But to come, we've got a reptile show. If he turns up, he's, the fellow's coming with snakes and lizards and explain a bit about this country. That won't take too long. But... Oh, Volvo just fell over. Uh, <laughs> um, this afternoon we, we, we have, and, and we've got one or two volunteers at this stage, we want people to get to come up here and tell their stories about the road. We, we want to look at issues. We, we don't want today to be a negative day, but we do have to approach some of the things because it affects us every day. Maybe a look at speeding. Uh, are we represented in the industry? We, we hear all these wah-wah talks down south. But are, are we represented correctly? Well, if we can just talk about that, talk about the essential nature of our, our industry. Regulation being imposed, we've got the NHVR, we've got people talking logbooks of the Territory and all this sort of stuff. We just want to cover some of those things so 
We'll cut to the chase a little bit for a short time, for 20 minutes. So I do need a couple of volunteers. Break for a bit of smoke or something else. Liz is organising a bit of a talk amongst ourselves. because so that's what it's about. Because today, and I, I don't know if we're succeeding, but it's, it's giving us permission to believe that we're an important part of Australia. More than that, we're giving us permission to, anyone says just a truckie, to knock them flat. Uh, verbally, of course, um, and realise what we do is incredibly important. And, and over time, and, and I know average age here is, is getting on a bit, so, like myself, um, we've, we've, we've all... 28 eh? 28? Yeah, well, I'm 29. Yeah, so... <laughs> well, there we go, one, one volunteer there. Um, so, so um, if, if we can do that through the day, at least start something. If we can start something that, that we've all fought for anyway over, over the years. So we look forward to some, um, some blokes out of the industry still behind the wheel. Bob McMillan's going to come up. We need a couple of other people to come up and we'll just bounce around, tell a few yarns, get a few laughs, handle a few of the tougher issues. So that's coming up probably after the reptile, uh, after the reptile show. But in the meantime, um, grab a cuppa or whatever's available, a few nibblies, and, uh, and the big thing about today is just we're all under one roof here. Get together, have a yarn, and uh, talk about what we do. Thank you. Now, if you want to see a frilnick lizard, go to Darwin. They live in the top of Australia only. They grow to that long. They run on their back legs. They stick their frill up to make themselves look big and angry. Now, what bearded dragons do is when they get upset, they puff their bodies out. All so, reptiles, all boys, have two doodles. The only ones that have one are crocodiles. All the rest have two. They're called heavy beans. Now, if we were given two, we'd all be blind. Outspoken. And I think his column was speaking out, and uh, he's always been outspoken, and he's an inspiration to me. He's one of those fellows that have stuck in with the industry, fought for it, and carried it on. Um, so, Bob, just briefly, as as I said, we're not we we had planned to go into some serious stuff, but there is other time for that. But where do you think the industry's going? Well, I wouldn't really know, Bruce, but I'm two things I can say. I'm probably very glad that I've got less kilometres left to do than what I've already done. And uh, I heard you and um, Mr Bestwick talking on about gearboxes and automatics and all this jazz this morning. And I was just thinking, my mate Terry Conran's over there and we used to uh, run up and down the coast together chasing each other in, uh, in Max. I was given a Max drive when I was 19 and he was a bit younger, I think. Those Max had two gear sticks. And then they bought out the 237s with one gear stick, and then some of them had two gear sticks, and now they've got no gear sticks. And I don't know if I can th think of that as progress, mate. <laughs> <laughs> the first Truckies Day was deemed a success. On Friday and Saturday, the traditional reunion events took place with 127 men and women inducted to the Shell Rimula Wall of Fame. And on Saturday night, the gala dinner, and time to let your hair down. Early Sunday morning, Julie Gavin puts the finishing touches to getting her pink Western Star just right to lead the rig of the year convoy. The trucks muster. Instructions are given to drivers and it's time to go. The first rig of the year convoy in Alice Springs.
Okay, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Rig of the Year presentation for 2012. Uh, my name is Bruce Honeywell, I'm from Truck and Life magazine, and uh, we've, we've set the Rig of the Year up, trying it out for the first time in Alice Springs, and uh, from all accounts, it's, it's working very nice. For, for a start, I would like to call Liz Martin, who has partnered us in, in this deal and the, the National Road Transport Hall of Fame. fame. And um, it, at this stage, well, it's just been a wonderful four days that we've been here. But just to uh, welcome us to the, to the Hall of Fame, I'd like to call on Liz Martin. Thank you, Bruce, for all those kind words. And once again, welcome to Alice Springs and to the National Road Transport Hall of Fame. Um, we're really excited this year. This is our first rig of the year that we've done in Alice Springs and uh, Bruce himself has put in an amazing amount of work into this and unless you're actually involved in those sorts of things you don't realise the logistics from behind the scenes. So a special thank you to Bruce Honeywell and Trucking Life for doing that. And of course to all our other sponsors who, who make the weekend possible. But the most important ingredient in this big mix is you guys, the trucking industry. And we're really thrilled here that the industry has taken us on as the keeper of your history. So anything that we can do to help you preserve, whether it's a vehicle, whether it's putting one of our pioneers on our, our, our Shell Rimula Wall of Fame, whether it's looking at an old truck, saving a truck from somewhere, every truck we get doesn't necessarily come here. If it's something we've got or something that we don't need or, or something that's too expensive for us, we always try and find a home so that it's preserved. So always let us know if something's about to go onto the scrap heap or, or disappear. But uh, just a few words. I've actually got half a voice today. <laughs> so welcome and thank you so much for all making the effort to come and keep trucking because you guys are Australia. Thank you. And girls, Julie, sorry, <laughs> wherever you are. Thank you very much, Liz. Rig of the year came up, there was no sponsors, there was nothing, what are we going to do? So I spoke with Liz and I said, we need somewhere central. Where, where would be the most central place be? Well, here we are. A lot of people say it's a long way from, from nowhere. Other people say it's the center of this great nation. And uh, so we, we tried out, we had our Truck and Life Truckies Day on Thursday, and we've got today. And I am um, when I when I went out and saw the people by the road this morning, um, and the trucks gathering there more because this is one of the, the so-called small years of, of the reunions, and uh, it, it was it was very heart moving for me to, to to see that. And as we launched them out from out at the Shell truck stop, um, they came through town. Yeah, I. I Road transport is such an important part of the Northern Territory and that reflected in the interest in today. Now I've got a, a, a fairly major announcement to make before we get on to this year's Rig of the Year and that I, I spoke about Shell partnering with Truck, Truck and Life back in the 80s. Well I can say now that for the 2013 Rig of the Year and all the Rig of the Months leading up to it, once again we're in partnership with, with Shell Rimula and that, that excites me a lot. And I, I mentioned the other day that um, we all like to have a whinge and everything from like, like with truck manufacturers and things like that, but we're all really one family. Fuel, oil, trucks, drivers, fleets, logistics, everything all comes together. And yeah, we all have our moments between each other, but really we're one big family and that's the way it's got to, well, that's the way it should be. So I really, really welcome Shell Rimula on board and, and right to this day, even before it started, they've been generous and we'll hear, hear a bit about more of that uh, in the future. Today is the inaugural Rig of the Year 
uh, presentation for at Alice Springs. It's no secret who won it. It's a very big pink truck with a, a very pink Drake trailer, just not far from where we're sitting now. And I've, I've got to meet several times and done a run with the, the woman who drives this on a day-to-day on a -day basis and, and found a very special woman that, that saw far beyond driving her truck. It's pink for a very good reason, as I'm sure most of you will, will realise. Um, I first heard from Julie, who I think it was about September last year. She rang up and says, Bruce, I don't know who you are, but um, October is Breast Cancer Awareness Month. I want to be rig of the month. And I, I thought, who the hell is this? You know, tell, tell me this. <laughs> then I thought about it. And uh, our, our, the company I work for, Doug Deep, flew a photographer over. And sure enough, it was rig of the month. It met all the criteria. And it went on from that to be chosen as rig of the year. It's, we we're introduced a new way. It's, it's reader's choice. People have to email in their votes. Uh, it, it won hands down. And uh, more than twice, I think, the votes of the nearest competitor. So there was no doubts about who, who won it this year. And who is this person? And I'm sure she's probably trying to be in hiding. Yes, <laughs> that's Julie Gavin. So Julie, if you come up here. Hello. Who you are now? So this is, this is Julie. Yeah, she's not quite as tall as me, but I tell you what, she's got an incredible heart. And she's fought every bit of the way for Breast Cancer Awareness and the McGrath Foundation. And we'll hear a bit more about that for a start. But first of all, we'll, we'll work our way through the, the presentations. So, I've talked enough, Julie. Go on, Julie. It's a modest prize money, but from Truck and Life. Now this means it comes from everyone who buys the magazine. We've put five, five grand together for Julie. So congratulations. Now this is the moment Julie has been um, uh, dreading, but uh, I'm going to smile and lower the microphone. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, it's been fun. I'm living my dream. It's awesome how everybody supports breast cancer and I get to drive a pink truck and I hate standing up here talking in front of people. So thank you, big thank you to everyone. So how are you going to spend your prize money? No, the prize money will go to the McGrath Foundation. Now we have a couple more um, presentations here. Um, one, cat trucks, and you can see them around here today. Um, they're a new presence on our highway. Caterpillar engines aren't, but the, the trucks are. And uh, Jeff Tyzak is the General Manager of Sales and Marketing for Australia and New Zealand. And he's here, and I, I, they are footing the bill for today, uh, lunch and uh, uh, dinner tonight. So that's, that's pretty good one, but they're also... Uh, They've supported us really well on, on today with the, the actual event we're having now. So, Jeff, if you can just wander up here. Thanks, Bruce, and uh, congratulations, Julie. A uh, very, very worthy winner and a uh, wonderful cause. And I know I personally have donated some money to the cause, so it's, um, it's pleasing to see someone so passionate as yourself to, to win an award like this. I'm not going to talk too much about Caterpillar today because I think most of you know where we've come from. It's, it is good to Central Australia though because it means a lot to Caterpillar because it's where we're sort of born and bred, you know, with the graders and the dozers and all the generators and everything out there. So it's pleasing to be here and thank you for having us. And um, I think the crowd's a bit bigger than we expected, Bruce, so the bill's probably going to be a, bit, a little bit larger, but that's okay. Thanks for having us. And I've got a small little presentation as well for you, Julie. A little bit more pink. Ah, hey. Some goodies. Goodies are always nice. Hey. Can I just say that Kat 
oh, and West Track Caterpillar, we've got West Track in Perth, have supported me right from the word when we first said that this is what we're going to do and everybody looked at us and shook their head and said you're crazy. Caterpillar, have, it's probably close to $20,000 cash that they've donated to the McGrath Foundation up to this point, if not more than that. So thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Jeff, and don't go too far away yet, Dewey. It's a long way to bring a truck from wherever you might come from. Uh, it's pretty equidistant if you come from Victoria, Queensland, Western Australia. Uh, it, it's a long way. And Shell have helped out there again, and they've uh, pulled out a, a $5,000 Shell card to uh, present to Julie. And so I'd like to call now on Amory Curtis from Shell to come up and uh, Welcome. Hi everyone, I'm Anne Marie from Shell. Um, as Bruce mentioned before, Shell Rimmler are particularly excited to be involved with um, Truckin's Live Rig of the Year for 2013. And this year, um, I'm particularly excited to be able to give Julie a Shell card to value your $5,000. The idea originally was that it would help her get from WA to Alice today, but um, as is true to her nature, she's donated the $5,000 to the McGrath Foundation again. Well done. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. Thank you very much, Anne Marie and, and, and Shell, Shell Card and Shell Rimula. That just about brings us to a close of, of our little presentation ceremony today. Again, to Julie, this has been, it's been a long time coming. We've put a, a few miles together just to get here and to, to do the stories in the magazine and so forth, and it's been a, a really fun journey. So on this day, we've got a, 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 new, a new government in the Northern Territory. Uh, I'll be interested to see how that goes. And um, again, I want to thank everyone, and particularly, as I said before, to thank Liz, uh, because this has been a, a four-day event. Um, it's, it's been huge for her planning and I've been really happy and excited to be here. And I would like to think that, that one day this period of time can extend to the definitive truckies holiday. There's so much to do in the centre. The Northern Territory is such a wonderful place. I think it's, uh, if anyone's going to take a holiday, it's a good place and why not at the, the last week in, in August as we've been here. So did you want to say some more? <laughs> I think we've got a very special lady here today and, and I, I thank you very much and <clears throat> I'd like to think that she and, and the, the company she drives for uh, was started by Eamon, her, her husband. They run heavy haulage in Western Australia. Without all of that support we, this wouldn't have happened either. So a lot of things have come together for today and right down to the fact to the people who buy Truck and Life magazine. So I thank you all. And uh, so hang around, have a chat. Uh, there'll be some tucker on soon, thanks to, to Cat Trucks. And I'm sure there's someone I've missed out on thanking, but uh, I'm sure they'll let me know very shortly. So thank, thank you all. Oh, oh, Sam. <laughs> I'll just go, just quickly back. I nearly, I knew I'd forget something. Uh, I, I was over in Western Australia at, at, at AMA. My trophy. <laughs> <laughs> Was it give her a job driving a truck? That answer, that. <laughs> I've been standing here thinking, my trophy? <laughs> Just wait. Patience, woman, patience. Uh, and we were talking about, you know, I said, it's going to be fairly modest this year, the prize money, rah, rah, rah. And she says, I don't care, I'm, I'm giving it all to the McGrath Foundation but I'd really like just a, a small trophy and uh, just that so I can put on the shelf to remind me. That's the trophy she just threw on the ground. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> oh, excuse me, how did you guess? <laughs> Congratulations Thank again. You. Yeah. Thank you. Okay, as we were, thanks for the, the being here and uh, just sit, kick back, like I said, have a yarn amongst ourselves, and uh, Tucker will be on soon. Thank you very much. Right. <laughs> 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 <laughs>